Hi, I'm Meredith Walker, and I'm here today with this fascinating group of smart girls to talk about robots. Jocelyn, do the robot. <laughs> 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 Hi everybody, it's Amy Poehler, riding in on a robot, like I've been known to do. I'm sorry I can't be there with you, but I just wanted to say congratulations to um, Cynthia and to Jocelyn and also to Carmel and Sara and Navrina and everybody there today with my good friend Meredith Walker who are celebrating women and their work in science and technology and most specifically getting ready for the first robotics championship. You are all amazing thinkers, and we're so pleased to call you smart girls. You um, really are the definition of what smart girls are about, which is uh, people being curious and interested and taking big chances and following what they love to do. So congratulations to all of you. We cannot wait to hear the stories. Meredith is gonna talk to you about your preparation. Don't be nervous. I wish I could be there to join you. Go get him. Godspeed. God willing. Wear comfortable clothes. Don't forget to have fun. That's it. As Amy just said, we are very pleased to have this group of smart girls with us. Smart girls know that finding out what fascinates you leads to a really interesting life. And all of these young women have done that. Navrina Singh is an engineer at Qualcomm who builds technologies that go into cell phones, robotics, and other areas. Sara Naderi, otherwise known as Robot Sara, <laughs> is the lead engineering instructor and designer of the Qualcomm Thinkabit Lab and makes engineering fun and engaging. Cynthia Arenas is a first robotics participant, a high school student, a mentor, and a hacker. Carmel Fisco is a first robotics alumnus current electrical engineering major and a former member of the FIRST Robotics team, the Holy Cows, and Jocelyn Perdomo, another FIRST Robotics participant, a gifted speaker, and an engineering enthusiast. For those who don't know, will you tell us about FIRST Robotics and how it evolved into what it is today? Absolutely. So FIRST Robotics is a passion that I've been following for past nine years, but this was started by a dream that Dean came and had 20 years ago. He really wanted to make STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, and math, very pervasive, just like in every school, every kid knows about sports, but he really wanted to have the same vision for technology areas. Now we have about 300,000 students worldwide engaged in FIRST Robotics at different levels of the competition. Sara, you work to engage middle school students in STEM-focused opportunities. And there are so many efforts out there. There are so many initiatives and programs to try and get girls involved in STEM. But what is the one thing that you would say we need to know to encourage other young women to pursue such an empowering path? Um, I think the, the most empowering thing for young people is to enable them to identify with actually what they're building. We incorporate the arts and engineering and allow these kids to really manifest their robotic creations in a way that they they want to. And so because of that, because we're not telling them how to manifest their ideas or what their robots should look like, um, <clears throat> they make it into something their own. And when they make it their own, it it's it just they they light up. They get really excited. I light up. I get you know I get excited just to see their creations. One of the things that we school. do at uh, the Think a Bit Lab at Qualcomm is that we have the kids come in and uh, we try to, we, my boss always poses the question, how do you aspire to something you don't know exists? And so um, one of the things that we try to help them with is trying to identify their strengths, interests, and values, and how do you align that with a career? What role did your parents play for you guys getting involved in robotics and engineering? Well, my parents um, are always very encouraging, right? Uh, my dad's a mechanic, so he's always like tinkering with stuff and getting dirty. And uh, my mom's actually a stay-at-home mom, but she likes doing a lot of creative stuff and like she's uh, like always do, does like arts and crafts and um, different stuff like that. So I think that's like where the creativity for me comes from. My parents have always supported me and I've always tried, you know, in little ways. Um, to be there for me, even if they can't help me like with my homework or if they can't um, show me how to make something, like they always try to be there um, and support me. At the end of the day, my mom and my dad are the only ones there, you know? And, and 
even if it's just to give you the hand or give you a hug, but they're there. And, and I think that's what counts overall. And they take a huge role in my, in my life, not only in STEM, but overall. Sara, you work with so many students trying to introduce them to engineering and make it fun and accessible. And not everybody has parents who have the ability to encourage them and support them the same way. So what is another way for to receive encouragement and uh, you know even if it's not coming directly from your family. And the beauty of what I get to do I guess is it reaffirms this belief that well, we all all have an opportunity uh, no matter what their background is so long as there is an opportunity for them to be able to pursue it and and if there is anyone can rise to the occasion. I mean uh, the things that these kids are producing doesn't matter where their backgrounds are they're able to build the craziest robots. Um, and again, it's just, it's, it's independent of their background. So what might help them? You know, those, those opportunities would help them. I do think it is nice to have somebody in their life to encourage them. Mm -hmm. Now that person doesn't necessarily have to be a parent, but someone maybe stable, like, you know, a teacher. I've seen, you know, I've heard lots of stories of people with their, they've had a teacher that has inspired them, or it could be a friend that helps them and grows. I think the best thing that a person could do for themselves is to surround themselves with this positive thinking. So we're here in, with, among such brilliant minds. Um, are there any questions that the, the younger engineering enthusiasts Oops. have? So I'm already a second year in college, and I was wondering how can you find that specific type of engineering that you really want to go into? Because I've talked to so many people, and there's like so many thousands of different fields that you could go into, and I feel like halfway through college, I've like barely seen a fraction of what there is. So how can you go out into the world and see what things are and figure out what it is you want to pursue? We get asked that pretty much each and every day. And one of the ways to do it is you go and seek out the experiences and people that you want to learn from. So if you meet someone who's inspirational to you, just go and ask them what have they done, why did they choose the path that they did, and what do they do currently to influence and inspire the world each and every day. We have something at Smart Goals that's an initiative called Ask Her More, and it's about asking better questions um, of women, especially on the red carpet. <clears throat> so Sara, I would like for you to picture yourself on the red carpet. You're walking in to accept your Nobel Prize for your engineering work. Nice. A television. <laughs> that is That's a dream, happening. actually. <laughs> a television personality points a microphone at, at you and just asks, "What are you wearing? What would you say?" Well, I designed my own dress. Thank you very much. You see how the things are flowing? That's because I added some fans that are working inside my dress. Um, so I actually have this dream. This is really weird. Just imagine a crazy gown that's moving as I move and it looks like they're slowing and then maybe even like have like steam come out as I walk. Sure. <laughs> I mean, why not? Like have my own little cloud that I'm walking on and I'll be like, I made it myself. And then like show them the inside like control panel and be like, you see that? That's all me. <laughs> I would like to know what everybody's dress idea would be for your Nobel Prize winning walk down the red carpet. Jocelyn, what do you think you, yours would be like? Mm, I don't know, maybe some electrical component, maybe have like some outrageous dress with like something around me. And I don't know, if I'm doing something with like space or something, I don't know, I could have like the planets or some rocket or some cool like rotating thing. I think it'd be cool that at the bottom, like hit it under the dress, you had like a motorized skateboard so that way you don't even have to walk. You can just kind of like <laughs> arrive. Efficient. Some type of segue, <laughs> saving yeah. time. <laughs> Save an energy, I like that. I think I would just program everything as I do certain movements, like certain lights would go on and like, def you know, depending how I'm feeling or, you know, just something crazy with lights. I think my dress is gonna have a lot of flexible display and I think I'll use it as a display board, you know, free marketing. So in true Smart Girls fashion, we're going to end this the way we end everything at Smart Girls and that is one, two, three, dance! dance!